But it's funny, and this is something that I've, I've always kind of thought about, and, you know, maybe this is relevant with the Super Bowl with Brady uh, down in Tampa. Um, but over the past few years, I'd say past, you know, four or five, a lot of stars have left Boston. Ortiz, uh, Brady, Betts, Chara. Um, I wouldn't put Kyrie in with that, but he was a, a technically a star. Yep. Um, no, nowhere near as impactful to the city as the previous names mentioned. But you now have this, what's the next generation of, you know, Boston sports athlete. And, you know, I think there's a few candidates. A lot of people say Jason Tatum. Uh, the Red Sox really don't have one. Maybe he's Bogarts. Bogarts. Bogarts isn't big enough, really. Um, and the team isn't as good. Uh, the, the Celtics, or I mentioned the Celtics, the Patriots really don't have anybody. Um, unless you want to put like Chase Winovich on that. or you know, yeah. like, it, it just, there's n- nobody there. So it really comes down to me, to, to Tatum and Pasternak. Those are the two. I think those are the two right now and of who is the kind of the, the face of Boston sports, uh, especially the younger generation. Because you have Bergeron, you have Edelman, um, but those are older guys. Um, but I really do wonder who does have the edge there? Because in the respective sport, I think Bergeron is, is or excuse me, not Bergeron, Pasternak is better to the NHL than Tatum is in comparison to the NBA. Um, but in Boston, obviously everybody loves Jason Tatum and he probably gets a little more play, but Pasternak is there. And I think that, that says something. I think that says something. Where do you yeah, see it? I mean, I mean, I think, yeah, regardless of obviously hockey's a, a big, you know, draw in Boston, especially. So it helps him out quite a bit, but just the fact that, you know, probably, I, I mean, I would probably put Tatum at number one, just in terms of nationwide appeal. Uh, you know, if he's not, He's not maybe the same tier as Pasternak in terms of Tostanak's, you know, obviously the best goal scorer in the NHL. Like Tatum, if he's not a top 10 player, he very well could be within the next year or so. I mean, he's, he's really damn good. Like, uh, but I think just overall, I'd give the edge to Tatum, but I think it's more of the fact that considering how much the NHL has struggled over the years with marketing players, you know, how much, even when the Bruins had, you know, great teams for for years you know even looking back at 2011 like you got so many you know legendary players during that run but you also were still in a market where you had Brady and you still had some of the holdovers from you know you still had Ortiz you still had Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett like they were all like kind of in the mix I think the fact that now uh you look at kind of this next wave and the two best players, you know, you've got the NBA superstar number one, which makes total sense. And he's very deserving of it. But the fact that you got an NHL player is probably your number two guy who is, you know, not even, I think just limited to Boston in terms of his appeal. I mean, the NHL, they were smart, would keep on marketing him. I mean, he's doing all these Duncan ads, but he's a guy that's easy to market, right? He scores goals. He's a flashy player. He's got a good personality. You know, it's that's, those are the kind of guys that the NHL should be targeting. Like you gotta, you gotta give, Connor McDavid it is due because of how good he is, but he's not like he's the most, you know, engaging person. The most, you know, the most conversation people have ever had about Connor McDavid was his like Death Star yes. house that he built. Yes. Like that, that's, that, that was that was the number one draw for him. Like he, Paso and I, it's you know what is what is he wearing? What he says after a game? You know, just you know, kind of his overall uh, personality coupled with his skill. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely those two guys are the top, Tatum and Pasternak. I would still give Tatum probably the slide edge just based on the sport and the overall appeal. But, yeah, if you told someone, you know, even a few years back that, like, uh, a Bruin was going to be, I think, definitively probably number two in the city, uh, I think people would take it. It's just, I think, a testament maybe one to kind of the changing the God through all four sports in Boston. But also I think it's, you know, due to Pasternak's own personality and his skill and just his overall appeal. Yeah, and I think the thing with Pasternak is, and, and this, I feel like this gets overlooked a lot, how big of a generational piece he is. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you really look at it, and, and, and from all angles, you know, you, yes, you have the goal scoring. But just, like, even you remember back with Sagan. You know, Sagan was good, and Sagan got a lot of points in that 11-12 season. Obviously, he had his issues, but that was the thing. He had his issues. He had... Um, you know, tough, a tough time kind of getting up into Boston's top six. You can put that on Claude if you'd like, but you know, Sagan also was not as consistent as people might have wanted him to be in certain areas. Um, Pasternak has everything. He does. And that's something like, like Fluto had that uh, feature on how he was drafted. 
And it always amazes me that they got some of the guys who went before uh, Pasternak went, such as uh, Tony one D. Tony D'Angelo, Tony D, DJ Tony D. Uh, I was, yeah. you know, it was incredible that, that, that a guy who had racial slur problems in the OHL got picked ahead of anybody, but whatever. Point is, you look at the goal scoring. You look at the, the, the flashiness. You look at the personality, always you know, dancing and, and interacting with fans when they're there and, and you know, engaging and, and fun to follow and likable. Like that, that, and you see with McDavid, that is not something you get you know, every couple of years or every even 10 years. Like that is a once in a 25-year star you picked up. And like maybe the Bruins could have got it in Barzal in 2015. I know they weren't high on uh, Barzal, obviously, because they didn't pick him. But you look at the whole package with Pasternak, and it is incredible that that is someone they're going to be able to build their team around. And the other thing, and he said this at the, at the media day and then at the Stanley Cup, he said it when he signed his you know, first big deal, he ain't playing for the money. He's not. I mean, who knows what his next deal he'll call for. I'd imagine it'll be more than this. Yes. But, but nevertheless, the fact that he's willing to take less to have guys who are uh, really good around him. It's incredible. And, you know, obviously we always appreciate Pasternak. We always talk about how great he is, but when you really look at the full package and what you said, the fact that, that a Bruin is definitively number two, maybe number one in this city, Mm -hmm. it's not a Canadian market. Like hockey's big, but football's bigger. Baseball arguably is bigger because of the history and basketball with the Celtics. I think is bigger with a younger audience, maybe a little more active on Twitter. Um, but you know, Bruins and Celtics are always neck and neck for three and four. That says something that says a lot. Um, and I mean, you could make an argument that Pasternak's personality is better than Tatum's, you know, you could make that argument. Um, but again, obviously the nationwide appeal is a little more with Jason Tatum. Uh, 